Now, for Dr. Kraft, when you were actually working on Mars One, what made you approach, I understand, did you approach Dr. Cass to bring him in to help involved with this, or how did Dr. Cass get involved in Mars One? Yes, no, I approached Dr. Cass because we worked together in, in Russia when I told you about my isolation chamber. I worked with him and, and his sister, and later on we were in contact about publications we worked together. And in NASA, a couple of projects, uh, his sister was involved and he was a little bit involved too. And that's, we kept over the years in contact and you know he's excellent. And there's a specific reason. In the selection committee, as a member, uh, the minimum requirements is that they have worked in different space agencies. Because our crew is not just American or not just European, is mixed from all over the world. So if a selection committee member does not understand how cultures react to questions, how cultures react to, to, to challenges and so on, because of the culture, they don't, they judge him wrongly. So a, a Russian would be more serious, others would be more goofy, others would be more funny. And you have to understand this comes from their background. It's not, he's not as good as the others, it's just different. And they have to understand and they have to work, and both have worked, uh, Dr. Kaz and his sister, in this field with astronauts and they have the experience from different astronauts from different space agencies and this is one of the minimum requirements and that's why I'm so happy they are on board and I'm excited about that too. So now Dr. Cass, when Dr. Kraft approaches you about getting involved in this, uh, were you uh, uh, excited about it being involved right from the outset? Did you have questions or concerns? Oh, I did. I was wary, and I did have some questions and concerns. Uh, <laughs> I was uh, first wondering: Is this a serious venture? Do should I really lend my name to it? Uh, are they really going to get there? I did have questions. Then, on, then I thought: Well, they are trying something. They are enthusiastic, and uh, well, we don't know whether it will happen or not, and I don't. But if I can be of any help and give any advice, well, why not? And if it really happens, well, this will be tremendously exciting. So I can't say that I didn't have my second thoughts thinking, well, this is something bad on one hand, but on the other hand, uh, we often do mad things. Uh, we won't get anywhere if we don't do something a little <laughs> bit uh, crazy in our lives. And I'm sure many of the successes we see today, people said in those days they were mad and they were crazy. So this is not a guarantee that we will succeed, but it is certainly not a reason to say it will fail. So I thought, well, I will give my advice and whatever it is, I'll try to help them make the best of it. So now for this, I mean, this is certainly different than we, there's been manned space flights, there's been the space station up there. This is certainly a little bit different than the fact that it's a one-way trip, it is setting up a new society on a different planet. So when the two of you are collaborating on this, how are you approaching this in terms of what you want to do differently than what's been done before in terms of uh, filtering out people or setting up situations in the modern space program as it is? Well, one of the, the key points is that we look that they can work as a team and they don't need to have any education ahead of time. So really we look who fits, who works well together. And then we have 50% male and female, which is not the normal case. It's not the case at all actually in space flight. And, and that's why we're setting out. And we want to send, and big difference is mature people out there. So they cannot and should not follow orders. So now, now, nowadays is the ground station tell the astronauts in space, you have to do this every five minutes, every 15 minutes, and this is your program of the day, and you have to finish it in this time frame. In our cases, we have the delay, as Jim mentioned before, worst case scenario, we have 40 minutes delay. There can be a lot of things happen in that time. So they have to be mature and they have to do these things. And we have no, to be honest, we have no hold on them. If you think about it, mm -hmm. space station, they came back, I can put them in prison if we need something bad. On Mars, they say, ha ha, put me back to Earth in prison if you want. <laughs> you know, you have to be serious about these things. Yeah. You have to think it really so. So we want to be ethically responsible people, mature people, and that's why we have the 10 year of training to test them on that, send them there. It's a very different approach. And applicants ask me, uh, how will be our group of four structured? And I told them, I don't care, you make a democracy, you make anarchy, whatever it is, you have to prove that their system, that your system works better than the other group when you perform. And then what's the learning, and, and this is what Jim Cars and Ray Cars always try to do, is the experiential learning is very different. So we are not teaching it from, from a flowchart, whatever. You say, you try it out in your group formation, and then you will see if you succeed or not. And if not, then you learn it by yourself and say, oh, 
this really doesn't work, Dianachi. Maybe we should try something else. And then how they improve with the learning, experiential learning.